Hey guys and welcome to my stoat guide. In this guide I'm featuring the greediest build you can think of. Carpentry, Decima and Relic build. Carpentry is what I thought a very very greedy lore. Which you usually don't take in multiplayer. But I think it is worth the hustle. And yeah, Decima is a lore which is exclusively for the stoat. And we are going to abuse that lore like crazy. Okay, we got an open stone, which is pretty nice. And it has our food on there as well, that's not so nice. Also, we've got a second stone. Uh huh. That's really interesting. Also, I can afford to. Uh, Destroy my uh, Pathfinder pavilion because I will scout it with forts later. So now my um, goal is to increase my population as fast as I can. And also, I could build a fort and a woodcutter on my main to save up on wood a little bit. And now I'm just going to sit back, relax, and wait until I have population, which generates faith. I think two taverners is enough. That's why I reassigned one taverner to get to turn into a subject back again. And once you hit like 12 population, you have to build a, a quarry and mine your stone. So keep that in mind. Because you don't want to, like, population block yourself. Let's not forget to build a woodcutter. And once I hit 12, I'm going to turn this into a duchy. And the way you can do this, where you can actually, like, kill this wolf real quick. No problem. Um, the way you do this is you actually assign villagers in this zone in a fort and that's that's uh, a duchy later on so you want to go for via regia so that your mart evolution is free and now i'm on 11 subjects so i will have to build a fort and i'll have to work the quarry very soon also, I think I'll have to kill a sheep. I won't starve. Let's build the forge. Build a quarry. Can hire a lord right away. We got the gold for that. And now comes the fun part. Signing all your villagers. Mine stone, and you've got like crazy amounts of population in August 800 because of your tavern. So, next is food building. We want to finish the food building once we have like uh, a carpentry, upgrade it instantly, and we have to work one rotation one, only one rotation of levying for stone. And you'll want 80 wood and 40 coins in order to upgrade your food building. So I have to build my food building now. Wait for carpentry. Don't upgrade it just yet. Reassign your domain lord. Carpentry, upgrade your food building, and this is like crazy good for you already. Next is upgrading the tavern. Since upgrading the tavern will increase the livability in, in my tile here. So I'll need a lot of wood, first of all. And as you can see, I have minus coins. So what am I going to do about it? Obviously, I'm going to place a march. Since the mart is what generates coins. 
And once I got the march, I can upgrade it for free. And then build a forge. I'm going to place my forge here. So we want to wait until we have like Domainial Fort because that increases livability in this zone by two. And now I will evolve Tavern as well in a second. And I need more population, increase livability in adjacent zones, and work your hostelry. Since population means you can have more workers in all the zones and you need a lot of population. So happiness equals more workforce. Also, I will develop this zone. And once I do that, I will reassign all of the, the, these guys after the levy to gather the rest of the stone. So that's my 8 livability. And then I wanna build a monastery. Somebody else trading the Yurton, by the way? I hope not. So now I got Guardian and now my, my forts are scouting like crazy. So usually I can I can save up on food. Or at least like not trade away my food. But I think with the with the sheep I should be fine even without like saving up on food. So next is building a monastery. The stone should be mined soon. Nothing you can do sometimes. So that's my monastery. Developing this. Trading food to your turn. And now I want to increase my livability in there even further. And that's why I build, I'm building a tavern there. Next part is mining iron. Since I want to boom like crazy, I can just go ahead and upgrade every single tile I have just to increase my livability. And then I will pick inland protection, clear myself, and obviously I will smithy my food production. So let's clear. That's done. I need more tiles. I want to build my lore relic, actually. So let's build a sentry camp. And then recruit my chief. Clear this. And then with this iron I can still go for relic. In this case. So let's save up on food a little bit. And I should actually be fine if I take this. Let's see, maybe maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Yeah. 
I'm definitely intrigued. So let's go for sharp axes into bow of obedience. Yeah, and look at this. I have plus 28. In winter. And now I can finally go for a lore relic. How does the U-turn situation look, by the way? Wow, I'm like 60% already. So I'll have U-turn soon. Can bet. Relic is done. Back to this. And now it's all about getting camps. And now I want my Vow of Poverty, get a smith out for my one gold tile, forge myself, and then that's it. Also, now since I want to upgrade my camps, I need to mine my second stone. Find the stone, go for grinding wheel. Later on I want to go into mutual effort, but let's see how long the game goes and I'll need another house let's upgrade this means more livability and now all I need is camps and then that's it also like colonizing with um, with faith Feels so good. Like, feels really, really good. So, I wanna upgrade this anyway. I wanna upgrade this um, to a citadel anyway. And now, all I need is like more camps. And once you get like suppressing fire, it turns out you actually don't need as many camps as you would think. And soon I'll be able to mutual effort. Trade the U-turn, like I said. And then I have a U-turn. I could convert. I should convert. And maybe your team has even scouted. Also. What's really, really nice, if you uh, place a fort on the tile with camps, you can then in turn levy for military power. I want to show you this very soon. Okay, so now I got the Jotun, 802. Looks like really, really good. Now I can go for dwarves. Let's actually go for the K form dwarfs. These guys. Upgrade this. Soon I have Valve Poverty. And overall you're just a very like defensive clan, always levying for, for your team then at this point, the stage of the game. Build another sentry camp, obviously. You could also like trade away your food to your neighbors. That works really nicely as well. We have like tons of lords. And you can basically like fort everything. And I'm not using like any uh, any food upkeep right now because all I have is like lords, militia, a Jotun. So this feels like overall just really really pleasant. Also, um, you're noticing that I don't have much spare food, so it's really nice to like have the ability to colonize with faith instead of food, in my opinion. I feel like that's really, really nice. And obviously you can levy twice. But once you get like 1,500 1, military XP, it doesn't really matter. And then you can like... Yeah. Depends on what you want to do. If you want to defend, if you want to attack. Smith yourself, obviously. If you can, maybe build the smithy on your uh, current tile faster than I did. 
and also try to forge yourself like earlier if that's possible but like i said this build is one of the greedier ones you have to always like forge hauberg hauberg is insane so once i got this forged i'm basically ready you don't have fur coats so you don't want to attack in winter with the stoat but by any means you like don't have to the wood for that hauberg is done and now is the question, do you want to go for champions or what, do you want to go for fantasins? I'm going for champions here. But you can do both. Easily. And just to show you like the convert here. So you know what to expect. Let's just attack anyway. Her cards doesn't mean anything. That's about all there is to it. Well, let's just kill this guy. Get Milstrat or Feeding safe. I like Milstrat a lot because I don't have enough uh, upgraded camps. And yeah, this levy would increase like the health. And this levy would increase the health and the attack speed. So if you are in a very, very... Um, huge fight then you can just levy for this so let's take a look how much it actually does so we got five resistance 50 health and if we levy like this we got five resistance and 56 health instead also it increases the health of the u-turn as well and i've got like no problem sustaining this as well so, in the case of scouting, I obviously have to upgrade my scout camp here. So yeah, that's it for four. Remember, like, subjects don't, don't need any food. Having the ability to, uh, like, trade neutrals, trade your, your allies, have a lot of population, Insane defensive power like this this game is like, literally all about the defensive power because of the militia and the lords and then like Having the ability to assist your team while also having the ability to, to convert a lot That's why the, the stoat is so good so strong Also I could levy this And I could levy this and it just increases my military power into oblivion. And also the, the ability power, uh, the military power of all your allies. That's important as well. So yeah, that's it. Everyone's still unhappy. The military levy stacks. So, <laughs> just so you know, it's pretty damn strong and it can make a difference in a fight if like two equal armies fight each other the army which gets military levied wins so that's it for the guide i hope you learned something new and i hope you have a lot of fun stoting and i'll see you guys next time Bye! Hey guys, I just wanted to share with you what you have to do when your stone is closed because in this case you will have to take inland protection first and that actually works pretty easily as you just build a woodcutter on your main as well and then you build a fort on your food tile and after building the fort on your food tile and taking inland protection you can then hear yourself.
So that's your lord, and your lord will have like, no problem clearing this. And then you can continue with your basic build. That's basically it. <laughs>